Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you how electromagnetic radiation should fit the general equation for waves, the general wave equations. In order to do that, we're going to take the electromagnetic radiation, a plane wave, and use Faraday's law and Ampere's law to try and derive the general wave equation in one dimension. All right, so what we can do here is notice that as the wave travels a small distance from x to x plus delta x, the electric field will of course change just a slight amount. That means that it's slightly different here compared to there, and the same over here will be slightly different from there compared to there. Same with the magnetic field will be slightly different between the point x and x plus delta x, because after all, the, the magnitude of the oscillations change over position and over time just like any wave. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to integrate around this loop, use Faraday's law, to add up all the products of the electric field strength times the distance traveled over that, over that closed loop. So there's four different integrations, so we'll do one at a time. The first one here, notice that it's parallel to the electric field strength. This is the electric field strength right here. This is the magnetic field right there. Electric field in blue, the magnetic field in red. And so of the first integral, we have the electric field strength, which is E, which is a function of x plus delta x, and time. And we multiply that times the distance traveled, which is A. And since they're both in the same direction, that means the cosine of 0 is 1. Plus 0, because when we integrate the second section right here, we get 0. Minus, here we're traveling the opposite direction to the electric field strength. So it's minus E, which is a function of x and t, times A. And then plus 0 for the final integral. And that would be equal to the change of the uh, magnetic field flux with respect to time. So we could say that that would be minus the area, the area would be A times delta X times the partial derivative of the B field with respect to time. And the B field of course is a function of X and T and you say well why did I change a regular derivative to a partial derivative? Well I did that because I'm taking derivative with respect to time and the B field is a function of both X and T. All right, now I can go ahead and simplify that by dividing both sides by A and delta X. If I do that, I'd get E, which is a function of X plus delta X and T. Notice that on the right side, E is a function of X plus delta X because I'm a little bit further ahead. On the left side, it's simply a function of X and T. Notice the difference there. So A is going to cancel out when I divide both sides by A. So I get minus E as a function of X and T and the whole thing divided by delta x, and that should equal the negative of the partial derivative of b, that's a function of x and t, with respect to time. Now when you take a close look on the left side, notice that that's really the, the algebraic definition of a derivative. If I then let delta x and the limit go to zero, that becomes a derivative with respect to x, so this would become the partial of e as a function of x and time, with respect to x is equal to negative the partial of b as a function of x and t with respect to time. All right, now we'll stop at this moment. We'll come back to here in just a moment. I am now going to do the right side. Now here again, to, for clarity, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four, the four segments of my integral, my closed loop integral. Doing the same on the right side with Ampere's law, I'm going to integrate around this loop right here, so I can take the, now notice here that the direction of travel is an opposite direction of the direction of the B field, so I'm getting a negative sign out of that, minus the B field as a function of X plus delta X and time, notice here it's X plus delta X, and that would be multiplied times A plus, if I travel this direction, it's perpendicular to the B field, so I get no contributions, that's section number one, section number two I get zero, plus section number three, it's in the same direction as the magnetic field. Notice that here is the electric field, there is a the magnetic field, and so same direction of the magnetic field, so it would be plus B as a function of X and time, and that would be the section three, plus the contribution for the fourth segment is zero again because it's perpendicular, it's perpendicular to the B field, this is section four, and that equals mu sub naught, times epsilon sub naught, 
times the area, because that's the flux. The flux is the, magnet, is the electric field strength times the area. So it would be the area, which would be A times delta X. And that would be the partial derivative of the electric field, which is a function of X in time, as with respect to time. Again, it becomes a partial derivative because I'm only taking derivative with respect to time, not with respect to X. Again, I'm going to divide both sides by A times delta X, and I'm also going to divide both sides by negative 1 because I want to make this positive and that negative. So this becomes B as a function of X plus delta X and time minus B as a function of X and time divided by delta X is equal to, so this becomes negative as well, so negative mu sub naught epsilon sub naught times the partial of the electric field with respect to time. Okay, and then again, just like it did on the left side, this looks like the algebraic form of a derivative, so when I take it to the limit as delta x goes to zero, this becomes a derivative with respect to x, so the partial of b with respect to x, as a function of x and time, is equal to minus mu sub naught epsilon sub naught times the partial of the electric field with respect to time, x, and t. All right, now, Notice over here, I have the B field with the derivative with respect to time, there I have it with respect to x. I'm going to take both, both equations and take the derivative of both sides, in this case with respect to x, and in this case with respect to time, so I can make those two terms equal to each other. All right, so when I do that, I get the following. I get the partial derivative of E with respect to um, it's a function of x and time. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So this becomes the second derivative of this with respect to x equals minus the second derivative of b. But one of them is with respect to x. The other one is with respect to time. I'm going to do the same with the right side. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to time in this case. So this becomes the second derivative of b, which is a function of x and t with respect to x with respect to time equals minus mu sub naught epsilon sub naught times the second derivative of E with respect to time. Okay, now let's take a look. Notice on this here, I can say that this is equal to the negative of that, and here I can say that this is equal to the negative of that, which means if I then combine these two equations, I get the following. So I'm going to move the negative sign to this side right here. So let's move the negative sign over there. Notice that this is now exactly equal to that, which means that this must be exactly equal to that, which means that the second derivative of the electric field, which is a function of x and t, with respect to x squared, is equal to mu sub naught times epsilon sub naught times the second derivative of e which is a function of x and t, with respect to time squared. And then realizing that the speed of light is equal to 1 over the square root of epsilon sub naught times mu sub naught, then this would be equal to 1 over c squared, which means that the final form would be the second derivative of e with respect to x and t, with respect to x squared, is equal to 1 over c squared times the second derivative of e with respect to time. And this is a function of x and t. That would be the second derivative right there. And this then shows that by using Faraday's law and Ampere's law, we can show that electromagnetic radiation exactly fits the general equation for waves in one dimension. And of course, we can do the same for all three dimensions, so we can show this actually that this works for a three-dimensional equation as well. But to keep it simple, we'll just do this for a single dimension, dimension of x. So that proves that electromagnetic radiation is indeed a wave, just like a wave on a string, and it follows the very same equation for all waves, the general equation in one dimension. Pretty interesting and amazing how by using Faraday's law and Ampere's law, we can actually prove that that's the case.